And Donald Trump's arraignment on criminal charges loom as the former president still look towards the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Where does Trump stand as the race for presidential candidacy takes shape? Here with the details, we've got Yahoo Finance contributor Kevin Cirilli. Kevin, all right, where does he stand? Leading the pack. There's actually a Yahoo News YouGov poll that just came out since the indictment charges were announced uh, or made public that there's going to be an indictment rather in the last couple of days. And it has Trump leading at 52 percent, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis at 31 percent. So double digit lead for Trump. All of the other candidates are in single digits and 11 percent are undecided. Look, I spoke with multiple sources connected to the Trump 2024 presidential campaign over the last few days. They told me Trump's in good spirits, that he fully intends to fight this, that this has been a re-energizing effort. Uh, for his 2024 campaign. He's been working the phones, talking to members of Congress, where I am this morning, uh, in, his, in the Republican Party. And they fully intend to utilize the Judiciary Committee, chaired by Freedom Caucus member Jim Jordan of Ohio, to, to put Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg in their political crosshairs. When you look historically at how at how Trump has fared any time he's been up against uh, impeachments, January 6th and whatnot, uh, they've always seemed to fundraise, fundraise, fundraise off of whatever scandal is, is thrown his way. Case in point, over the weekend, the Trump campaign putting out a press release saying that they were able to fundraise four million dollars. Twenty five percent of that money is coming from first time donors of an average size of, of $34 a pop. So I, I, I think the Trump campaign feels that not only has this been energizing for them, but that it also has been a way for them to define their political opponents. Uh, you know, nickname uh, Florida Governor DeSantis, for example. Uh, and every other Republican challenger is reacting to Trump. So they feel that they're setting the narrative. In contrast to that, I will tell you this, as I, I reported last week, I spoke to Corey Lewandowski last week. He, of course, was Trump's 2016 campaign manager and a top advisor in the Trump administration. And he told me that, yes, while uh, Trump feels good about his positioning in the primary field, it's the case here in Washington, not the case down in Georgia, not the Stormy Daniels case up in New York. The case here in Washington uh, pertaining to January 6th, that's where perhaps there's a bit of uh, more uneasiness uh, uh, as it relates to January 6th uh, from Trump's allies uh, as, as they look to, to the political future. So, Kevin, perhaps spitball with us just for a little bit here. Yeah. What does this mean in terms of the current elected officials that are in Congress that if they see polls like this might change their own stance, their voting, what their tenor is, especially to their own constituents, and how that can also impact some of the very economic policies that are set to be voted for. Oh, yeah, let's not forget everything surrounding debt and the debt ceiling in this country, too. Well, uh, look, Congressman Jim Banks, a, a, a conservative from uh, Indiana, went on local Indiana radio on Friday and came out to support Trump. So conservatives uh, are using this at, in, in many ways to fundraise for their own uh, to tout their own conservative bona fides. And, and so I, I think that, look, it's a primary season. So Nikki Haley, uh, DeSantis, Pompeo, uh, they're all having to jockey for conservative uh, dollars, donors, uh, and, and support. So I think that that's going to continue to heat up. But what, if there's anything that the last few days prove, it's that Trump is still the early front runner for this race. As it relates to policy, I'm not sure that the indictment uh, charges or, or the potential future indictments are going to impact uh, debt ceiling negotiations or, or, or other policies. In, in fact, I would go so far to say that based upon my reporting, they won't, uh, because Congress has typically been able to separate uh, many of those important policy areas. As it relates to the debt ceiling, separately from the Trump uh, 2024 campaign effort, there hasn't been much talk. But last week in an op-ed, a centrist Democrat, uh, Senator Joe Manchin in the Wall Street Journal, criticizing President Biden, criticizing Biden uh, for uh, what he says is not being able to negotiate or implement the Inflation Reduction Act, particularly as it relates to fossil fuels. There's this interesting centrist conversation happening with presidential politics for centrists about where do they go? Uh, because if it's Trump, they're not going to back Trump.
but will they back President Biden in a re-election effort should he announce? Uh, and I think that that's brewing. That conversation would, I would argue, would have more of an impact uh, on the policy discussions, whether or not there's a centrist candidate, a unity ticket, for example, that would have more of a of an impact on policy than I think uh, the Trump indictments. Yeah, it sounds quite insulating from Manchin, considering that he has been one of the hardest to negotiate with with the Biden yeah. administration. Uh, <laughs> Yahoo Finance contributor Kevin Cerilli, thanks so much for breaking that all down here for us today. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.